I started by cutting the default cube in half and adding a mirror modifier to make the modeling much faster. I turned the default cube into a very simplified torso for my character. After that, I started making the limbs as separate objects, as a lot of PS1 games did that. I think that's because low poly models deform really badly when animated. I decided to rotate the arms so that when we do the rigging, the arms would rotate in the right direction. You can pretty much just duplicate the arms and tweak them a little to make the legs. For the head, you can just add a cube, add a subdivision surface modifier, a loop cut in the middle and you have a pretty great head shape. I did tweak the jaw a little to make the head a little less round. Next up, we'll mark the seams on the object's edges so we can unwrap the UV map. For the head I just made the seam line go from chin to forehead from the back of the head. You should really think about where you mark the seams, because those edges will be the ones where the texture ends. And when we're using a low resolution texture, the edge will be highly visible. And that's why I tried to put the seams in places like the armpit, because those places most likely won't be visible most of the time. Once we're done with that, we can select all the objects, go to UV editing, select all the faces, and unwrap. I suggest increasing the margin, so that different parts of the texture won't bleed into each other. You can also increase the size of the face polygons on the UV map, so that there's more space for detail on the face. Next you should select all your faces, go to UV and export UV layout. This will export the UV layout as an image. You can use it to make texturing easier. Now you can import your UV layout into your image editor and scale it down to 128 by 128 pixels. Let's get started with the texture. I downloaded this image of a fake face from thispersondoesnotexist.com and I used it as a base for the face. I ended up editing the face a lot and I think it turned out great. I downloaded this fabric texture from texturelib.com and if you're interested in other places where you can find free textures, I talk about it briefly in my previous video about PS1 graphics. I cut the texture to cover only the areas I wanted it to and turned it into this button-up shirt. I ended up using the same texture for almost everything in my character. Lastly, I did some polishing and tried to add the shape of the fingers onto the texture. Using these low-poly models, most of the detail ends up being in the textures. So keep that in mind when creating the textures. Let me know in the comments if you want a more detailed video about texturing. Once I was done, I indexed the image to only have 32 colors. Back in Blender, we should create a material and add it to all of our objects. Add an image texture, load up our texture and connect it to the base color. Switch the sampling to closest to make the pixels stand out. Let's get rigging. Add an armature, go to object properties and turn on in front. In edit mode, start off with the spine. Then add a separate bone for your arm. Select the arm and a part of your spine, press Ctrl P and keep offset. Do the same for the leg. It's important to name all your bones and for the limbs add underscore L or R for the side. This way we can mirror the armature later. Extrude these extra bones for the inverse kinematics, split them from other bones and remember to turn off deform, as they're not supposed to deform any mesh. For IK, use the bone near the foot and the hand as the target, and the elbow or knee bone as the pole target. Set the chain length to 2 and rotate the pole angle to get the right rotation. In edit mode, parent the foot bone to the IK bone. Back in pose mode, add a copy location modifier, and as the target, use the bone with the IK modifier. Do the same for the arm. When you're done, go to armature and symmetrize. In object mode, select all the meshes, then the armature, then press Ctrl P and select with automatic weights. We have some bad deformation here, so what we'll do is remove all the unnecessary vertex groups from the torso. Just lock the spine bones, press here and delete unlocked vertex groups. We can check the bones in pose mode, and if everything's alright, 
Then we're basically done here. You can now go on and animate your character. I'm thinking of diving deeper into the PS1 and why it looks the way it does. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my uploads. And if you like the video, please leave a like. If you have any requests for different tutorials, leave them in the comments.